about the five most common mistakes CELPA students make in writing. This is something I see time and time again, unfortunately. So you might be one of the students making these mistakes. Let's discuss the first one. It is being too general. By this I mean giving information that doesn't have good examples or descriptions. Now I don't want to mislead you and say that examples are important. That's not what this means. It means something like, for example, you're talking about in your task two about how a hospital should be built in this empty space instead of a park. And you talk about the hospital will really help all the patients uh, and they would be really happy because the hospital will be there for them. Okay, this is so general, but I see this unfortunately so many times. Where is the why and how, the theory behind the hospital helping out? So if I go into the theory a little bit, I like to explain this to students in a way where you have to think like you're explaining this concept to a five-year-old, but with really fancy English. So uh, I would tell this five-year-old kid, if a hospital is built, not only will it assist people in getting there quicker, but it would create a sense of calm in the community knowing that medical facilities are nearby or a phone call away. It would also reduce the waiting times in other hospitals with the presence of an extra hospital taking care of the patient's load. So in this case, you got descriptions about the hospital, exactly how it will help. If I talk about why it would help, that is also mentioned. It's mentioned how people will be waiting less. People will also have a sense of calm. So the why and how the theory behind it is explained. Now, if you want to do an example, which a lot of you like to do, which is okay, I just want to make sure you understand it's not mandatory, okay? But if you want to do an example, you can say, for example, and then essentially insert the same thing. For example, someone who is in the vicinity right now, 20 minutes away from the hospital, having a hospital nearby would reduce the time by half. And here you can go in a little bit more detail. Okay, so don't be too general. Don't say this is good or this is excellent because people will love it. Or even say things like, because of many reasons. What are those reasons? Specify it. Now, point number two is a little funny at this point because point number two is to not be too specific and it's funny because I just said be specific but not too specific there's a balance here what this means is when people are too specific they're taking names of actual people companies governments and so on for example you might say that the hospitals should be built because uh, Sally Hansen in the department of this state in California recommended 2500 patients to uh, do the survey and whatever What's happening here is you are quoting a news item and the examiner says this person just read this online and they're just copy pasting it. It is a memorized script. It doesn't look like they are using original thought or ideas and that's where you lose marks if it's too specific. You do not need to sound or you should not sound like a news reporter. Instead, you should sound like a scientist or a mother or father explaining something to his or her five-year-old kid. What that means is, again, go deeper into the why and how. The scientists would also go into why and how, the theory behind everything. So an example here is how you would define something like you should eat healthy food because it would reduce obesity. And a lot of people would end the definition there because it's common sense, right? Like, why do I need to explain this? But in CELPIP, you need to explain this. So the scientists would go on and say, when we eat healthy food, we reduce our fat and sugar levels, maybe put a little bit of biology, reduce our insulin levels, eating the right foods. That leads to a decrease in our fats and cholesterol in the body, leading to the burning of fats every day, resulting in lower pounds on the scale um, as the progress continues. Finally ending up with a reduced overall weight, which is ideal for a healthy heart and body. You go into the definition. You have to explain the theory. And if you, if you don't know how obesity works or how it the reverse of that works, choose another topic, something you can explain, okay? So you, you got to do something in the middle. If you're too general and you say obesity, redu uh, eating less would reduce obesity, or you're too specific and you mention a survey, a study, a company, you're going to be in trouble either way. So you want to find the right balance. 
my technique here is to remember the words why and how. Everything you're, you're trying to explain, just ask yourself why and how and answer those questions and you'll do the exact theory that you need. All right, simple sentences is number three. A third reason people fail in self-help writing is having a lot of simple sentences. If you ever write uh, in your task one, I'm writing this letter because you're toast. You are not going to get a good mark because it is very simple. It's so basic. Everybody's going to say that. And you want to turn these into complex sentences. Now, I'm not going to get into the entirety of complex sentences. You can check out our other video here, Type AZ Education Complex Sentences. You're going to find multiple videos on that. But what I'm going to tell you is complex sentences are things like um, starting a sentence with considering, um, although, or due to, words where you can split the sentence into two parts. For example, I could say, not only would this uh, measure be great for humanity, comma, it will also help in whatever. So by using not only, I broke down the sentence into two parts, it became complex. That's one way to make it complex. And just to give you five words, because you wouldn't need more than that, uh, you could use due to, considering, given that, not only, and you could say where, uh, all, although, and that's when you have contradictions. Okay, uh, there, there are also other ways, for example, using semicolons in the middle of the sentence to break it into two points, using connectors in the middle of the sentence, using however, furthermore, or therefore in the middle of the sentence, or using the complex start, as I've already mentioned, but don't overdo it, don't make every sentence complex, but don't make every sentence simple. So that means keep a good balance of simple and complex sentences. Point number four is the words itself, the vocabulary. So using basic words, it's, it's very common. Uh, people saying stuff like, I want to complain. Let's change that. Let's say, I would like, I would like to lodge a complaint regarding, okay? Um, people saying that it is a small issue. Say it is a trivial issue or it is an important matter. Now here you can say important, you can say crucial, significant, imperative, etc. right? There's so many synonyms there. So that's uh, the first step. But you could also change the phrasing to make it more fancy. So instead of saying it's an important matter, you can say this matter requires your attention immediately. Okay, so you're using different fancier phrasing, uh, something that is unique that people don't often use. You get better marks with that too. Last thing is uh, the body two issue. Okay, so this is not for task one. This is in task two mainly. Uh, a lot of people, when they're choosing between options A and B, right, in, in the survey questions you have to choose. So let's say you choose option A and you talk about the benefits of option A. You talk about that in body one and in body two and you don't talk about option B at all. That is a problem. This works in IELTS. It doesn't work in CELPIP. So CELPIP wants you to explain both sides not positives, please understand this, not positives on both sides, but positive on your side and the negative on the other side, okay? So let's say you selected option A, you're talking about how great option A is, all the benefits and all those things in body one. Body two is supposed to be how option B is bad. How does it affect us negatively? Show the cons in body two. That's how you will cover both sides and you'll keep your opinion simple and straight, right? Because you're supporting your side, you're criticizing the other side. Obviously, it shows that you are clear about your one-sided answer, that is your opinion. What this simply does is it helps the examiner see that you're able to do an argumentative essay, because this is meant to be an argumentative essay. It is like the copy of the task two in IL, so that's what they're trying to copy it, a copy here. Um, so make sure you, you have an argument, you have a debate, and that's only gonna come when you present the opposite side. Please do not make the mistake of saying in body one that option A is great, and body two, option B is great also because, no, body one is option A is great, and body two is option B sucks because of these reasons. Okay, so avoid these five mistakes that I commonly see with students. Please avoid them in your exams so you can score a better mark. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk very soon. Thank you.